Hello, Happy New Year and welcome to Exotic Gardening UK, Yorkshire Chris Weekly. It's been incredibly mild the last few days. We've had a nice Christmas at home due to Covid, we've not been able to go out, but now we're out of isolation. Obviously been able to come out into the garden in this time, which has been great because the last few days have been incredibly mild. It's been the warmest New Year's Eve and New Year's Day in the UK on record. And today on the 2nd of January 2022, it's still nice and mild, about, I think it's about 14 degrees. A little bit breezy, but it's nice and dry and incredibly mild, like I just said. And in this episode, we're gonna go around the garden check up on all the plants, see how they're faring through the overwintering process to show exactly what an onset looks like in the middle of winter, what a tree fern looks like, what a palm tree looks like, what a collocasia looks like. So you can see how they fare in winter and how they're doing in this particular winter, which so far, apart from that snow we had for a couple of days in November, has been pretty mild. So let's have a look around the garden. Now, first of all, let's look at the tree ferns. And as you can see, my tree ferns are still very green. They've not been hit by the frost. But just to remember, we did have minus 3.5. We've had lots of sub-zeros, about five or six, I think. There's quite a lot in November into early December. And we had full snow cover for about 36, 48 hours in the garden. So we had a lot of early snow, which is unusual, but it's been mild the rest of the time and tree ferns, they can do down to about minus five-ish without so in blackening on the leaves if they've got a bit of snow cover on top. And because they had snow on these leaves, they've not gone brown or black at all. They're nice and fresh looking. And I've not protected these yet. So you may, if you've been going through my videos, the monthly videos of jobs to do in the garden, I didn't do one for December. And that is because, to be honest, December and January are very similar because what I'd like to do in either December or January is mulch the ground, so we'll show you that later in the garden, to go over the collocasias and cannas. And for the tree ferns, I like to put straw in the centres as well, and also some other things, which if you refer back to my January video, you'll see the other jobs that I like to do. But I haven't protected these at all yet. Like I said, minus three is not an issue for these plants. Ideally, before that snow came, I should have really got some straw and put them in the centres but to be honest, they're full of mainly uh, bamboo leaves and eucalyptus leaves anyway, so they've got a bit of protection in the centres. But they're still looking great, and I will, before we get a cold period coming up, I will protect these with straw in the centres. So that's probably a job for next week, because we probably will see some winter, proper winter cold later in January and into February, just because it's winter and that's what to expect. But at the moment, this is how my tree ferns look. And if we look up here, a bit of silhouette against the bright sky, we have got a very tall Tetrapanax papyrifera up there, and it's still holding on to a few leaves, but basically they'll fall over the next few days with the winds and obviously the colds coming in winter. And these are deciduous, really, in the UK. They don't hold on to the leaves because of the cold and the shortening days. And you've still got some flowers on there as well, but they're sort of going to fall off now because of the cold. If they had formed earlier, we could have got berries and then more seeds to germinate for next for this year. But it's such a, a late in the year before they actually do flower, we very, very rarely get seeds. In fact, I've never had seeds on mine and you normally get them so in much milder locations in the UK. So you get little black berries and then you've got little seeds inside. But that's how my tetrapanax looks. I do not protect these at all. These never get protected. And this one is standing at, well, well over three meters tall now, just the trunk itself. And there's many more smaller suckers around the garden that never get protected and they're totally fine. Here we have one of my biggest bootiers in the garden. And again, this bootier odorata, which doesn't need any protecting in most winters. Only if it gets really cold does it get protecting. And so far this winter, it's had no protection whatsoever. It's had snow on it and that's been totally fine. You do get some issues with some pounds, including bootiers, with spotting. And on the oldest leaf here, we do have a bit of brown spotting. And that's the fungus that's caused that. And the only way to deal with that really is to cut the infected leaves off with some clean secateurs and then clean them afterwards so you don't spread on that fungus or anything else. 
and the spores are in the air in spring and autumn when it's wet so unfortunately it can spread to other plants but like I said some plants are more affected than others and it's the sort of cold and wet grey skies for weeks and end over winter and autumn that can cause it to spread further and if it's quite waterlogged the ground. This one doesn't doesn't really get affected too bad it's just the very oldest leaves that have got this the newest leaves from this year and last year are totally fine and you've got new growth coming because it's been incredibly mild like i said the last four or five days so a new leaf is actually trying to come out even though right at the start of january so here we have my main arid bed and we do have a rain shelter over the center and that is mainly protecting the agave americana underneath that doesn't want to be really wet in winter. So like I said, that's seen minus 3.5 this winter, it's seen minus seven in previous winters and just about, just about scraped through. Got agave montanas around there as well, which are fine even without the shelter, but they've just got it over because it's sort of, obviously it's very close to the Americana, so it gets protected by the same shelter. And there's also a agave la fanfa around the side, which is protected as well. Not protected are the Yucca Restratus and the Chemops Vulcano and also at the top of the picture we've got the Briar and Martyr Palm which is not protected whatsoever. And again, like the other plants, seen minus seven and come through fine. I had spear pull one winter but out of what the last 12 winters it's only that's the only damage it's seen but it's come back strong after that spear pull about three or four years ago and it's grown away strongly. Only if it gets really, really cold will I try to protect this with fleece in the middle and over the top. But until then, it's completely unprotected. So here we have probably my favorite evergreen bed in the garden that looks good all the year round, 12 months of the year. And it's basically three big specimens in one eight foot by eight foot bed. We have this wonderful hardy European fan palm, that's Chemerops humilis, which was bought as a very small plant, but it's grown really well and has a trunk now that I would say is about approaching a metre tall and with its foliage it's getting to about two metres tall and about two metres wide as well. In front of it we've got this Decilarion, this is Glaucophyllum and we also have a fantastic Yucca Faxonia over there which will grow in time to be a huge tree Yucca, vicious, vicious, very very sharp tough leaves on that one. So I do try to cover it with corks or cut off the spines in summer when people might be walking past it. And these don't need any protection. This European fan palm we'll see at this size minus 10. The yucca again about minus 10-ish and same for the Dizzelarion about minus 8, minus 10 will be its sort of limit really without some damage. And also to the right of me We've got, we've got the bamboo behind me, which is Phyllostachus nigra. And we've got this a bit sorry looking plant here. This is a euphorbia. And it's, since I've bought it, it's always had some damage to the leaves. It's always shown a bit of early yellowing, some orange patches and black patches. And I've cut all this back before and it's still come back and shown this. So actually, this plant might get removed this year if I sort of refresh this bed and sort of change some of the plants. So this might be lost, but it's a great evergreen plant if it did have this damage. We do have over in the distance the Euphorbia mellifera, which does look good in winter and especially in spring when it flowers and it's a nice evergreen plant and looks very exotic. So these, no protection whatsoever, totally fine for a winter. And here we have my big Jubea chilensis. Again, no protection on this whatsoever. When it was much younger, it did have a rain shelter over the top, but now it's a nice, big, established plant. It gets no protection from the wind, rain, snow and ice. The bottom right of the corner, you've got that washing up basket. That's got a little uh, a, um, aloe polyphyla underneath it. So it's got airflow, but it's got a bit of shelter from the rain as well. So I'm just using what we were going to be throwing out just to cover that over. So that's just a bit of protection on the polyphyla. I have got some other polyphylas in the greenhouse as well. So this, in contrast to the nice evergreen plants, is my summer display, which looks awful in winter. 
So this is all the things like the cannas, colocasias and gingers and begonias and you can see the remnants of all those plants in the frame here. So the big stems to the left have collapsed with the gingers and this is a very hardy ginger so this doesn't need any protection whatsoever but I will clean this bed up, cut off these old stems soon and because it's close to the other plants including the colocasias which are in the centre to the right can just see the the base of these but mostly it's the mushy leaves and stems that you can see I will put straw over this full bed so it'll protect the colocasias and it will protect the gingers as well and also at the far bottom left corner the whitish mush you can see a begonia bonfire stems and again these will be protected with straw and these will come back in the spring and the summer got eucormis in here we've got some dahlias in here as well so all that is all in this bed, all looks a mess right now, but like I said, I'll clean up all this floppy foliage that's gone to mush, take that away and cover this with straw. Not done it yet because it didn't need it because it's been mild, it's not been really cold, apart from those couple of, well, two or three days of snow and ice, but that's not enough to have killed these plants because they'll have been insulated by the snow and by the soil and the dying foliage. So in the centre of the shot you've got the big Gunra malacata which has just been protected by its own leaves just huddled over the top of the crown of the plant and then if we look up we've got the huge grasses here, Miscanthus, Giganteus and they're still standing nice and tall and pretty firm. Got some old flowers at the top as well up there and these will be cut down in spring right to the ground and all this dead foliage will be taken away but for now it's given a bit of winter structure to the garden. Here we have a wonderful Trachycarpus latisectus still looking really good even after the coldish temperatures and snow cover but it is protected somewhat by the loquat tree above it and the bamboo hedge behind that as well so it didn't see the full force of the cold so this is really not wanting to see lower than minus three because you will start seeing some damage to the leaves but it is hardy to about minus seven eight ish really so this is like i said been through minus seven and it's come back but it did lose all its leaves pretty much apart from the the newest leaf when it got down to minus seven so no protection on this yet And here we have a wonderful Sheffala, Sheffala macrophylla. A lot of people, well most people think it's, it's very tender, but I found it to be sort of borderline. It's seen about minus, I think it's minus six, minus seven, this one, and it's come back from that. And this is, this was covered in snow again for a couple of days, and it's shaken that off, and it's looking fine. So it's hardier than most people really realize. This is my Cordeline Indivisor, which probably won't last too much longer, not because of the cold, but because it's a really tricky plant to, to keep happy. And this is starting to rock already, so it's not really got good root attachment to the ground, so it may not survive. We'll see how it gets on, but at the moment it's sort of holding on, but it's, uh, like I said, it's a little bit unsure of itself in the ground, so we'll see how it goes next year. But this doesn't need protection. If it is in a happy spot, it should see, like Codline Australis, down to minus 10 without too much of an issue. Here we have my Musabaju, which I've not wrapped yet. I was going to wrap some and keep some unwrapped. And you can see all the snow and everything killed off a whole of foliage completely. But the stem stayed firm. So this stem has seen minus 3.5 and it's still fine with no protection. I would say minus four is your limit really for the stems. You want to protect them with straw or fleece or something like that if you're gonna get lower than minus four. And ideally, like I said in my November video, an October video, I protect them if you're going to definitely want to keep the stems in a cold location over winter. But you can see the mild, mild weather we've had the last few days. You can see a bit of green poking out the top, bit of growth. So this plant is well and truly alive and I will get round to protecting this Musabaju very soon just so that I don't lose the height on this one and there's a good seven or eight big stems as well 
in other parts of the garden and some of them I'll protect and some of them I'll just mulch over the ground. This is a bit of a, a messy shot but it serves a couple of interesting things. We've got the blue bamboo, the Brinda 1046, looking stunning and that doesn't need any protection. It does lose quite a lot of leaves in the cold winter winds but they'll soon sprout new leaves in spring. And behind the blue bamboo, we have a couple of pots of carnivorous plants, including a pitcher plant. You can see in the middle distance there. They stay out all winter, unless we're gonna get like minus eight, minus 10. So these have stayed out every winter so far. And these have been covered in snow. They've been completely frozen through and they continue to grow year after year. It doesn't do them any harm whatsoever. They can be slower to get going in spring if you leave them out rather than bring them under cover but it doesn't affect their actual, you know, hardiness. They still grow year after year. And then on the far left hand side, you've got my Princeps palms that we transplanted earlier in 2021 to this location. And these are just establishing obviously this year and last year, and hopefully they'll grow really well later in 2022 and then really flourish from 2023 onwards. Now this is what my unset bananas look like. So if yours look like this, don't be too concerned. I'm sure these will look fine in spring, although they look pretty dead at this time of year. So they are kept dry and they've been kept in my greenhouse. So it's been kept at 10 degrees. So these, the lowest these have seen are about six degrees when the heater broke a couple of weeks ago and I had to rely on some little tubular heaters, but the main fan heater broke but these are kept really around 10 degrees all the time so it's not warm enough to get them in active growth it's not cold enough to see them go backwards decay and rot away so this is pretty much the ideal sort of temperature just to keep them sort of in suspended animation can keep them cooler down to about five degrees it can keep them warmer but they'll start growing if you keep them sort of above 15 degrees obviously the last few days we've had 15 degrees and they've shown a little bit of growth on these. And these are kept just at the moment, just in buckets, old tubs here. And they've got a bit of compost around these because I wanted to get them just sort of settled in very dry compost, just so in spring I can just get them going easier. They're ready to go. And like I said, these are dry, so they're not gonna rot away. And this whole bed is a heat bench, so it's kept above 10 degrees here as well just to keep the bottom of the plant slightly warm because if you keep the air temperature up 10 degrees in a greenhouse it can be much colder against a stone wall or glass window or on the ground where it's not insulated i found it can be like three or four degrees down there even if the air temperature is 10 degrees so i built this heat bench for propagation starting seeds in spring but i thought i'd use it over winter just to keep the edge of the coal off the base of the onset. So that's what they look like. I have been dealing with green fly that have caused lots of issues in the greenhouse. So even there's only a bit of growth on these, I've had to wipe off green fly continuously and spray them as well. And they've been obviously really annoying for these, but if these were in full growth with loads of leaves, then I'd have been a lot more bother and trouble and a lot more, well, thousands more green fly to deal with. Now my other plants in this bed, I've got all sorts of things. We have some other smaller bananas. we have also Begonia luxuriance, which I had to actually cut off all the foliage yesterday because it was absolutely infested with green fly, even though I was spraying it quite a lot, it was still sort of covered. So I've cut off all the foliage and that plant will then come back from the roots in spring when the temperatures warm up. A few of the colocasias and alocasias here, I've taken the leaves off those as well because they don't really need them in, in winter because there's not enough light and they're just attracting all the bugs. So these will be sort of kept dry, suspended animation again. And then in spring, we'll water these, temperatures will rise. I can increase the heat on this heat bench as well and we'll get new growth. 10 degrees is about the minimum also for the irisene, these colourful leaves down here. So these cuttings we did over winter and autumn that are sort of, they're ticking away and I have to watch out for the green fly on these as well, but they're less prone to green fly than the other plants that we've just mentioned. We've got some other bits and pieces down here as well.
Now, when it comes to aeoniums, I've got quite a few that I've sort of potted up. They're staying very green over winter. They're not coloured up to be purples or reds or anything like that because the light levels are very low, but they like to grow a lot over winter. So they are pushing out lots of green leaves. And these aren't watered. They're in compost, which is still a bit damp. And if they look completely bone dry, then I might give them a little sprinkle of water, but they don't need too much as long as they're not absolutely you know, desiccated. If it got really hot and sunny in this greenhouse over winter and it got to like 20 plus degrees, then yes, I would need watering, but my greenhouse doesn't get a lot of direct sun in winter, so they never get really warm. I do have quite a few aeoniums that I've not done anything with. They've just been pulled out of the ground, they're still in tubs in here. There's a big tub down there. They've just got a bit of soil around the roots from where I dug them up or pulled them up, but they've not been potted up yet. I'll get around to it and pot these up, but they don't need it as long as they've got some roots on them or even, you know, just a little bit of soil and a little stem, then they'll get through, no problem. Here's one of the polyphylas I was talking about. I've got the one in the ground and we've got a few on here with all my arid plants, the cacti, aloes and agaves, the small ones. These were brought in was it November, early November, I think it was, or October? And these haven't been watered since, and they won't be watered at all until we get to March. And they'll be totally fine just sitting here in the greenhouse until then. In the propagator, the heated propagator, that's where I keep the most tender plants. So I've got some more cuttings of things like the irisane. We've also got the party time here as well another sort of southern stonum and all sorts of little tender plants so these got bottom heat from the propagator they've got the plastic covers as well to keep the warmth in and let's look down that hole there we've got some little haniba bananas as well are propagated so we've got another batch of those growing away in there as well just to keep them going through winter and getting a bit of growth here we have a Colocasia mammoth, and this was dug out of the ground and then dried out. And you can see, because of the warmth the last few days, it's trying to grow. It looks pretty rubbish because it's winter, but this will survive fine because I have completely dried this out. So although it's got a lot of compost, I put this on the heated bench for a couple of months, and this is absolutely bone dry. What isn't dry is this bit of old stem here. I need to remove that because I don't want mould to get into the plant and rot to get into the plant. But this one will stay dry as this for the next couple of months and then I'll get this into growth as we get into March. Now these black stems here are the remains of the canna stems and I do keep a lot of these in the ground and I mulch over with straw. But some I do want to dig up so that I can get them to grow early in the year, including this canna musifolia. It's a nice, big, chunky, big section here that I will dig up. I could have dug it up last month after the first frost in, well, November and December, but I've left it till January. It's still not too late because we're still going to get the worst cold in January, February, possibly early March. So I'll dig these up before the ground's frozen and I will just literally dig the big chunk up, put it in a canvas bag or into a tub or something like that, put it under the staging in the greenhouse and just leave it like that until spring. And then when we see signs of growth, make sure that green flies don't attack that and just let it grow away probably as early as March. And then it'll be a nice big plant by May when I can plant it back out in the garden. But like I said, there's plenty in the garden that I'll do stay in the ground and they'll just be slower to get going in spring and they'll probably be about three or four weeks behind but they'll still make great plants and you don't have to mess about digging them up as long as the ground is free draining. And there's my bales of straw. So I've got two big bales of straw, I think they're four pounds each and that's what be going in the tree ferns and mulching the ground as well to protect those half hardy plants. Aloe striatula is pretty hardy and these are just left out, not protected whatsoever. Like I said, these have seen many sub-zeros in the past and they're totally fine down to about minus five. And then minus six, minus seven, you might get some die back, but they'll always come back from the ground if the top foliage is killed off. But I'll say four out of five winters, they keep 
all the foliage and look good all year round. Thank you for watching Exotic Garden UK Gorge Chris Weekly. Join me next week where we'll be doing more in the garden. <laughs>